Okay, I wanted to show you something here. One of the carvers that was um, very influential in me and first started carving, uh, I, st I received, a, I started getting his books, was a whittler by the name of Bill Higginbotham. And uh, Bill wrote a lot of books um, on, he probably had four or five books on whittling and, and uh, he was a very well-known uh, whittler of long ago and of course he's gone now he's dead but he wrote a bunch of books on learning to carve figures now Bill did things a lot different than I do them but but uh, he carved all different types of figures and and uh, cowboys and all types of figures but what Bill Higginbotham did was he carved um, he carved figures, he would carve the figure, and he would carve the arms and the hands separately. And that's what we're gonna, we're gonna learn to carve today. This is called a happy hunter, or it's, it's, it's gonna be a goose hunter when we get through with him. And uh, this is a big pattern, and I, I've reduced the pattern down to about five and a half inches. This is, this is probably 10 or 12 inches. Uh, I, I've seen some of uh, Bill Higginbotham's carvings and they were 12 13 inches so they were large carvings and uh, uh, he the thing is he did most of his carvings where he would carve the hats separate or things like that but in this case uh, uh, I have I don't do a lot of that where you carve the hats separate and and things but we're gonna do this this uh, goose hunter and as you can see, the hand and the gun are carved separate, and the arms are carved separate. So you have to be able to leave a space in there where you can glue the arms on, and then you glue the hands on with a gun, and then you also come to the part where uh, he's holding a rabbit here, but uh, you kind of see at this picture, if you can kind of see this picture, where he, he does it separate, a lot of things separate. Now I'm just going to do the arms and the hands separate, not the whole body. And here's the pattern for the hand and the goose, in other words. So this is a little bit different than what I've ever done. And I thought his carvings were neat. I did. I thought they were really neat. And he was real uh, popular long, many, many years ago. So what I did is I... As you can see, I, you see how big the pattern is, and I, I reduced the pattern down. This is about five and a half inches. Um, this is about five and a half inches uh, tall. So you can see I've reduced the pattern down a whole, whole lot, um, which is what I wanted to do. And so what we have here is the little goose hunter, is what we do. And if you stand him up like that, then... then uh, you know, you have the, uh, the piece right there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is we're going to carve the body and the legs together and the head together. Now this head was not carved separate, but uh, many of his uh, pieces, they are carved separate. Uh, there's a wood carver today who is an extraordinary wood carver by the name of Lynn Doltry. And Lynn does a lot of that. Lynn uh, carves a lot of things separate, the body pieces separate, the arms separate, things like that. And Lynn is, ex is an extraordinary carver. He, he's really, uh, I have never liked doing things like that, but it's, an, it's a different way of doing it. And uh, uh, I'm going to give it a try myself. Uh, one of the things that you do have to understand is that when you... Uh, when you you must leave a section in here that is flat so that you can glue the arm zone and all that other stuff so um, we will uh, work on that in such a way I'll show you how we do that in such a way so um, we're going to do this uh, piece we're going to uh, do this individual piece and uh, I'll bring this up just a little bit closer and uh, so now if we look 
him walking, we're going to come down here and we're just going to draw a line in the middle because this this leg will go back this far because this leg back here, this one extends forward and this one extends is, is in the back of the leg. And just like up here, we're going to cut half of this. Now this is a two inch piece, okay? A two inch piece of basswood and the figure is five and a half inches from tip to, to, to feet. So the first thing I want to do and then we have a little code in here and all this other stuff. The first thing I want to do is go ahead and get these legs. Get these legs back, okay? Okay. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go halfway... I'm going to go halfway down with these legs, this halfway part, and then I'll have this left here, and then I'll, I'll gradually bring the other leg down to a certain extent, because uh, so that we can kind of, uh, and then we'll shape it. But we got to bring this down. We have to uh, cut, uh, uh, if anybody remembers when I would do the dogs or the, the animals, uh, we would have the legs uh, in different positions and you would have to take some of the legs off. By the way, I want to explain to you that the, the grain is running this way. You want your grain to run uh, up and down from, from head to toe on this piece. I'm outside, so you're going to hear some noise at times. Bill Higginbotham was, uh, he really taught me, got me interested in carving because I liked the way he did them. And I, I was trying to do a few like that, and I just didn't succeed as well. But he did. Some people are very, just very good at this. And we're going to try to do it. It, it kind of... By carving the arms separate, sometimes it makes it a little bit easier and a little bit more simple, and sometimes it doesn't, you know, I mean, it just depends on what, uh, what you like to do. Usually, you know, I carve my arms on the figure, and most people do, but this was a way that Bill Higginbotham carved his figures. He carved them in pieces, and uh, he was very, his characters were very unique. So as you see now, I'm going to go about the halfway mark. This is probably around about, about here. We're going to bring this all down. So you have to remove quite a bit of wood. You see, we're getting there. get these mosquitoes away. We have had a tremendous amount of rain down here. And uh, the mosquitoes are starting to come out now. So, uh, all right, as you see, we're getting close to that area. And then when we get down to that area, we're going to stop. We're going to stop and we're going to um, then work on this front leg. This is the rear leg. In fact, I think when we carved the dog with the coon in the tree, uh, his legs were like that. We had to carve and, and the legs had to be whittled down and then the ones would go, one, one would go forward and one would not. 
So it's very similar to that. Okay, we're almost there. And the reason we carve halfway, we don't go want to go too far, is because when we we'll, then we'll work on the body and get it, you know, and then we can take some more off. But you don't want to take a whole lot off because remember in carving you can you you can't add too much onto it, but you can you know carving is taking wood off, not adding wood to. Okay, now we've gotten down to this part right here. All right, now here. This leg, and as you see as he steps, this leg will be forward, this leg will be back. Okay? So what we want to do now is come over here. We want to draw a line here, and we want to come to about the middle of this where it goes forward. And we want to start taking this off right here. where the foot will be back, this one will be forward, as he is walking. You have to sometimes get uh, Okay, as we can see now, and when I get through with this, you're gonna you're gonna see what it produces. Then, most of you already see that, but I mean, if you're a new carver, if you're new into this kind of stuff, you may not see it right at the moment. What uh, what the end result will be as far as this right here. I wanted to carve the goose hunter because I used to be a goose hunter. I used to be a duck and goose hunter when I was a young man. And um, this area down here on the coast used to be full of ducks and geese. And I hunted when I was young. And I even hunted a little bit as I got older, but... Um, uh, the ducks and geese are not down here anymore. Uh, we used to have uh, a lot of rice farmers down here. And those rice farmers uh, stopped growing rice. And because of that, we don't have the amount of ducks and geese that uh, uh, we did at one time. We were, used to be the duck hunting and goose hunting capital of the United States. Uh, because we're right on the tip of Louisiana and Louisiana had some extraordinary duck and goose hunting but um, uh, we like I said they they don't grow food anymore like they used to and I also understand that uh, ducks don't come down south as, as as much as they used to the migration has changed just a little bit Okay, as you can see, this is back, and this is going to be forward, but we got to take some more off. And so we don't have the hunting, you know, the, the superior hunting that we normally do. And uh, another thing too is uh, the leases. I was 
on the lease at one time and the ducks were just not really down here and they were charging like a thousand dollars a year to have a duck or a season to have a duck lease and to me that just seemed extraordinary because when I, I hunted as a young man I didn't have to pay even have to pay I just we just went out to our beaches and stuff and hunted ducks and did things like that but it just got to where you know hunting leases took over and um, they got it they got really really expensive so it got almost expensive to hunt ducks as it did to hunt deer I think down here to kill a trophy deer it's gonna run you about uh, five to seven thousand dollars just to kill you a trophy deer so uh, uh, to me that's a little extreme but okay now if we look at this again once again we begin to see that uh, the first portion of this is bringing these legs down yeah and 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 what happened it just when people stopped growing rice down here the duck hunting they they stopped coming down here or they, they kept going further into Mexico where there's more food and stuff and and a lot of your ducks now stop in like places like Arkansas and uh, which is superb duck hunting so they stop there because they, 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 they there's a lot of food and stuff but we used to oh we had thousands of rice farmers down here at one time growing rice and that is not the case anymore all right I think we've just about like right in here we've just about reached our point now but we're gonna stop now you see see as you as you as just is the this leg is back this leg is forward okay all right okay now let me go ahead and just kind of okay now this is of course just uh we're, we're, we'll thin these legs up and everything like that but okay right now let's go ahead and go to our head up here now we've already got it drawn on one side and let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna come around I usually take it go around like here and from that point we come up underneath here to here so um, this is our head and then then we have our our hat which it basically goes is like this okay And then here's our face, okay? Let's clean that up just a little bit. All right. Now, let's go ahead and take our head and let's bring it down with our hat a little bit. And I'm gonna bring this very slowly along here and take some off of here okay and let's do the same over here okay yeah that's about right and we're going to start bringing this down And this area down here now as we can see the face is going to have to come down a lot as we put it in so we're just going to start sort of uh, coming back here and hitting this and bringing this all down 
with our hat and our and the same thing over here we just start bringing this all down here and start bringing this all down We just go from side to side and we bring this down. <laughs> now I'm I'm gonna get another knife here because uh, I forgot to sharpen this knife before I, um, so I'm going to just grab another one of my knives here, and I'm going to use it because it's sharp. That one's dulling up a little bit, so I want to take this. In this area you want to be very very careful because by taking this away you are um, you are getting kind of close to your hands and stuff like that so you want to you want to be kind of careful in that sense okay now if you have basswood that's a little hard as I have gotten some sometimes this is this is this is a little bit harder piece than some of the ones that I've had too as you see I do I am struggling just a little bit with it most of it pretty pretty